Hey guys, what is going on? This is Eric from Online Biz TV where we teach you everything you need to know about online business. In today's video, we're going to teach you where to find apps to buy or to acquire if you want to start generating revenue if you're not a developer and you don't want to build an app from scratch. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you know whenever we go live or release new video. And if you haven't already, okay. No, and it cut it. And don't forget to hit that notification button so you know about everything that's happening on our channel. If you have any questions during the video, feel free to comment on the comment section below and I'll make sure to answer each and every person personally. All right, let's jump into the video. So if you've been following our channel, you probably know that we talk all about building SaaS products and you know different business projects online, especially if you're not a developer. We already teach you a lot about how to build an app from scratch. We launched the crash course video. You can check it out. It's going to be linked in the description below. It's going step by step how to find developers, how to build an app, how to launch it, how to promote it and all of that. But let's say that you want to move even faster. Let's say that you want to acquire an app and start generating revenues even faster. What I'm going to talk about in this video is where to find these apps for sale, how to buy them and how to make this process work. Okay, so let's start with an example of one app we acquired about a year ago from a website called Flippa where you can buy and sell online assets and businesses. We took it without any revenue because we liked the product. We relaunched it. We changed the name to Carti.io and now we connected it to both Wix and Shopify and it's now generating about $4,000 on a monthly basis. Now, if you want to follow the same process, you better continue watching. Watching this video. The first question you need to ask yourself is why should I even buy an app? And there are three very simple reasons for that. The first answer would be it's just so much faster rather than developing an app from scratch in most cases. If you start developing an app, it can take a few months to a year, depends on, on the project you're building. And if you're buying a ready-made app, it's just ready out of the get-go. The second reason would be that you just found a very good deal. Just like anything else in the market, you can find sometimes very good deals that are under market price. You can find apps that are generating revenue that spent a lot of time and resources on development that got tons of data and tons of interesting things in traffic. And then, you know, just buy them under the market value because sometimes people need to sell. So that would be the second reason. And then the third reason, and this might be sometimes the most important thing is actually the assets attached to the app. So you can buy an app that's already generating tons of traffic and tons of data and use this and utilize this information to your other apps and other projects on, you know, if you just think you can see the extra potential, you can buy this app and really flip it into itself to generate more revenue. Now, this leads me to the next point, which is which apps should you buy? And again, the first thing you need to consider is apps with potential. You don't want to buy an app that, you know, it's just going to sit there and keep generating the same revenue that it's already generating. You need to ask yourself, I'm looking at this app, it's already generating some revenue and some traffic, but I know I can make it better if I only do these small changes. Now, this could be a very high potential revenue for one app. So if you get an app that is generating a few hundred dollars a month and you say, oh, they're not doing this right and this right and this right. If I just fix these few smaller things, it's suddenly going to generate a few thousand dollars a month. Then maybe you found yourself a good deal. The second thing would be ideally you want to get an app that already have some data and some users and some revenue attached to it. You don't want to purchase an app that is completely new and it's not anywhere on the market and it doesn't have any data attached to it because first of all, there is a good chance there are plenty of bugs because there are no users to actually verify that the app is working. Also, you can't utilize the data to make smart decisions. Everything circles back to data. And if you can't use existing data to make the app better, you can't really improve. So again, you want to get an app that has some data about usage and customers. The third thing would be an app that works. What does it mean? It's better to get an app that's already running with some data and some users running it. But many times developers are going to sell their apps after they took it down because something didn't work. So you just want to make sure you never buy an app before actually playing with it, getting a testing environment and a staging environment. So you can actually go through the features, the different features, make sure that it works all across the board. And then you can make a smart decision. Never buy an app before you actually tested it and saw that it works at least at a very basic usage of the features. Another point you probably want to consider, especially if you're not a developer, you probably want to buy an app that already have a development team attached to it. Because if a developer built the code, it's going to be much easier easier and faster for that same developer to keep building the app. If you need to refine developers, they need to learn the code and only then you can move forward. So ideally, you just want to find the team who built the app and continue working with them. For us, for example, with the app we acquired, the guy who sold us the app also connected us to the guys who actually developed the app. And until today, we're still working with them, which 
make things much easier and much faster for us. So that's highly recommended. Again, try to get an app and have a hold of the team to continue the development of the app. Next thing would be the code quality. Now, again, I'm not a developer. So honestly, I can't tell you too much about how to check if the code is high quality enough. But what I would suggest doing is just get access to the code by the owner of the app and then find a friend or someone technical that you know that can help you review the code and let you know if there are any red flags you need to consider before purchasing the app. The last thing you need to consider is understanding the costs of the app. If it's down, it's probably zero, but still, if you want to get it back up, you need to make sure that you can cover these costs. Usually the heaviest cost is the development, but sometimes aside from the development, there are other external APIs or other external tools or anything external that you need to use that might cost you some extra money. You need to know these costs and make sure that you make smart decision before purchasing the app. I'll give you again an example from the app we acquired. So this app uses an API from Twilio to send SMS and then you need to pay for each SMS. So we just kind of included that in the pricing that the customer pays and that's fine. But you just need to know what you're getting into because if you wouldn't consider that and just get the app back to be live, we would probably lose a lot of money about SMS. So these are pretty much the things that I think about when I'm looking for different apps, you know, and after that, of course, comes the price. You need to understand if the pricing of the app actually makes sense. You're looking at multiples of three to five yearly revenue, depends on the app and depends on everything. If you're anywhere in these multiples, then you're doing fine. You don't have to worry about the price. Now, so you now understand exactly what you need to look for when you're purchasing an app. The question is, where do you do it? Where to find apps? Let's just jump into my screen. And I'll show you a few examples of different websites where you can find different apps or different SaaS products to flip, basically purchase and then list them on your own and start generating revenue and generating assets pretty much from thin air. Let's just jump into the screen. Okay. So we are in Facebook and I think one of the greatest place to find apps for sale would be to head over to Shopify app developers, Facebook groups. There are a bunch of other Facebook groups for app developers, but I think this one is the biggest. You can find specific groups for India, specific groups for Israel and a few different other countries. But this is the one big group that I think most of the developers are in. And if you just type in the search apps for sale, you're probably going to find some because sometimes app developers are listing their apps for sale right here. So let's just search for it together. Sell up. Hey, where can I sell? My Shopify app, you can see there are 16 different comments here. They're also mentioning Shopify flips, which I'm going to show you in a second. But again, just you can see that there are plenty of places here. All of them are going to be mentioned in the video. So let's just get back to the page and you can see here. So he's looking to sell one of his apps and you can see that there are many people commenting, people actually searching for apps to buy or to sell. So one comment that I will have about Shopify app developers group, you need to know that this area is pretty crowded. And once someone is listing an app here, usually there are a lot of jumpers. So there is a good chance that here you'll get an app that is not fairly low compared to the market value. So that's the first place. The second place would be Shopify Flips. You need to just sign up to swftexits.com and then you can just ask to join them, fill in your email. And then there's plenty of Shopify websites to purchase as well as some Shopify apps. You can find some apps to buy here as well. Again, this is probably not going to be below market value. Okay, another website would be Empire Flippers. This is where you can buy mostly websites, but some businesses as well. They also have an escrow service where they can help you evaluate your business and then help you sell it with their brokers, which is great. So again, very recommended website. However, if you don't have a paid account, you're not able to use the filtering. This is why I don't like this website. And most of the cases, there's not many SaaS websites here, mostly e-commerce websites. So this is Sassy. This is the Shopify App Store Index. They scrape all the apps information from the App Store on a daily basis and give you updates about different apps, new apps, most reviewed apps, etc. And then they have have this section called apps for investment. Okay, so these are apps that are looking to either get purchased or just get an investment for, you know, specific shareholding of the company. I know a few of these already been sold, but you can see for each app, if you go inside, you're going to be able to see the MRR, the yearly revenue, how much installs and some more information. And then you can contact these sellers and see if they're interested in selling. Another section very important in Sassy is the graveyard. And here you can really find some good, good, good deals. So as you can see, there are plenty of apps in here that are just no longer the app store because probably developers kind of gave up on them. So this WooView all in one. So it's got four reviews and then the rating is yeah five star reviews last seen about a month ago. And if I click it, I'm going to have a link to the original app store listing page. Now it's not really here anymore, probably because the developer kind of gave it up. So there's a good chance they're just rebranding or something, but still could be a very interesting deal. Let's head over to their website and you can see, yeah, it seems like they're still alive, but they removed the app from the app store. So maybe they're having some issues. Maybe they're going to be open to sell. So there's a good chance 
basically contact them, then they are going to be willing to sell the app or even have some other type of deal, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Another place that I would recommend is just the Shopify app store. So what you can do is if you just head over to any app, let's just go to this app and then just click on conversion and just clear everything. Now I'm going to see all the apps in the app store. Now, if I head over to the last page, let's go to page, I don't know, uh, 100. The further away we go on the search pages, we're going to find more and more apps that are ranked fairly low and probably are not making much success. And here, this is where you can find a lot of very interesting apps. So let's say that you want to buy an app related to SMS. So you can just search for SMS in the search bar and then scroll all the way to the last page and then you're going to find all the apps that are probably not doing well and you can reach out to them again and try to make contact see if they're not doing well or if they're interested in selling the app and then there is a good chance you can just get it probably for a very cheap price i'm not saying anything about this app i just went to the entire app store page it might be they just started out or something either way the thing is you need to understand that many app developers on shopify are just developers they are not marketers they don't know anything about how to push the app forward, how to get traffic, how to get revenue. They have no idea about how to do that. They only know how to build the product initially and they thought it would work and it might work. They're just missing some final pieces that you can complete and start generating revenue. This is what you need to understand. Sometimes they will be more than happy to just, you know, sell you the code and, you know, let you take it from there. Sometimes, you know, the developer would even be willing to keep working for an hourly rate and keep building the app for you. So that's even better. The next website I would like to present to you is Microacquire. It's a very cool website and it's growing pretty fast. This is where you can find, again, lots of micro SaaS businesses. So different businesses that are built on top of other platforms or just small SaaS businesses that people are selling. I think they might even sell different types of assets like websites or blogs and stuff. I'm not sure. But yeah, you can see that there are a lot of startup types here from SaaS, marketplaces, mobile, direct to customers, agencies, blah, blah, blah. And then once you log in, you're going to be able to log into each one of these listings and see some more data, including how to contact the sellers. So this is another great website. Website. And then another very cool website you can check out is SaaS Place, very similar to MicroAcquire. You can find different plugins, apps, domains, and you know, sell or buy this way. So this is very cool. You can see there are plenty of listings with a lot of information here. And the last one, which I like the most is Flippa.com. And the reason I love Flippa is because sometimes you can find here different SaaS websites or products that are under market value, because I don't think this is the type of customer that usually search this website. I think mostly they are looking for either domain main or e-commerce website. And whenever I look for SaaS, sometimes I find very good deals here. And I have a bunch of friends that also purchased apps here and flipped them. I have one friend who purchased an app for, I think, $500, flipped it, connected to the Shopify app store and generated $500 from the first month. So that's a great, great, great deal. Now, if you head over to SaaS and then just, you know, search for either Shopify or Wix or whatever platform you want to work with, you're going to find a few different apps. Some of them are very, very cheap and you can find very good deals here to purchase apps. And then you can just connect them to the Shopify app store or any other, you know, micro SaaS you can think of Slack. I don't know, maybe there are some Slack options here. So yeah, upvote rocks. I don't know what it is. Yeah, Slack app installed by 115 companies. So you see all of these functions very easily can be bought and flipped to generate extra revenue. I think this is pretty much all I wanted to show you here. Okay, guys, one final thought that I want to leave you with is another option that is not necessarily related to purchasing an app, but more so to partner up with different different apps. And this is something we've done multiple times. If you have specific set of skills, if you've been a merchant or you are a merchant or you just have some marketing skills or product skills, you think you have good intuition when it comes to the product, you can sometimes reach out to different developers or different apps. And instead of purchasing or acquiring them, you can offer them a partnership. You're not going to pay them for development. They're just going to continue take care of the technical side of the business. And you're just going to do all the marketing and business side of things. You can find very good deals this way. It's a win-win situation. None of you lose anything if the app works and it started to generate revenue. You both make profit. If it doesn't, you know, that sucks, but nobody loses anything. That's one option to go. And the beautiful thing about it, actually, I must tell you one crazy story. We reached out to a developer one time. We wanted to see if he is willing to sell one of his apps to us. And he said that he doesn't want to sell it, but he was willing to partner up with us. So we're going to do 50-50 split. Then we started working on the new version of the app. And then he said that he's moving on to another project. So 
so he wanted to leave the app so he just gave us the app for free and this guy actually he worked on the app for a while it didn't took off but he was willing to partner up with us and eventually he actually gave us the app for free so i'm just saying there are a bunch of easy wins you can find out there and you can really flip them in order to start generating some extra revenue okay guys this is it you now know everything you need to know about where to find apps why should you find apps to buy instead of just building your own and i gave you a bunch of different places and different tips about how to handle that if you still have questions about how to price apps how to how to check them how to know if it's a good deal how to actually make the process about contracts anything else that you find interesting feel free to comment or ask in the comment section below and i will personally answer each and every one of you if you haven't already make sure to subscribe to our youtube channel so you know everything that comes out and don't forget to you know click that bell icon so you know whenever things are actually going live and if you want to schedule a call with me or ruth we have the clarity link in the description below feel free to just have a call with us whenever you want and i think this is it i'll see you on the next video ciao